Coming up on Digital Music Trends 228 on the 15th of April 2015, the IFPI's Digital Music Report, Apple's iOS Music Revamp and streaming exclusives, music apps getting ready for the Apple Watch, Spotify's new massive round, Guitar Hero is back, Savin's tagging feature, Mixcloud news and much more. This week's show is brought to you by Gramophone, a small device that can turn your traditional sound system into a Wi-Fi music player. The Gramophone relies on your home Wi-Fi rather than on Bluetooth, which allows for higher sound quality. You can send your music to the Gramophone right from the Spotify app. And from that moment, the device will bypass your phone and stream directly from the Spotify servers, which means that your phone won't run out of charge and you'll be able to receive notifications and calls without interrupting your music experience. We thank them for the support of Digital Music Trends. Check out the website on gramophone.com. Hello everyone and welcome to Digital Music Trends. I'm Andrea Leonelli and this is the weekly show where we talk about and try to make sense of the latest news in the digital music industry. And uh, this week we start with a special announcement as DMT is planning a special event in London on the 6th of May to celebrate the 6th birthday of the show with listeners, friends and guests. So if you are in London or you can get here uh, for the 6th of May, uh, do sign up on digitalmusictrends.eventbrite.com and I'd love to see you all there. Again, it's uh, digitalmusictrends.eventbrite.com. And I'm not really sure what's going to happen yet. I there might, may be some podcasting involved, but I'm not quite sure yet. So uh, we'll see what happens on the day. And this week, it's a real pleasure to welcome to the show Nico Paris, co-founder of Mixcloud. Hi, hi, Nico, and thanks for joining me. Hello, how's it going? Great. And uh, again, it's Mixcloud. I, I stumbled when I said it. And uh, Olivia De Simon, experienced music exec, and now keeping busy on a bunch of different projects. So hi, Olivia, and thanks for joining me. How's it going? I'm very good. Thanks for the invite today and the party in May. It should be fun, uh, I hope. Uh, again, I don't know what's going to happen, so uh, we shall see. It's, it's in a basement. I hope it's not going to be too hot that day. But again, I, I'm worrying about too many things. So it, it, it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. That's why I don't put on events. It's just too stressful. Uh, <laughs> you're not really in control of what is going on there. Uh, and uh, so this week, there's a bunch of stuff to talk about. And also, uh, we're going to talk about Mixcloud 2 uh, with the latest uh, sort of beta integration into Sonos. But uh, let's uh, start by talking about the IFPI. And uh, so the IFPI today released a, a quick uh, uh, sort of a snapshot of, well quick snapshot it's a long document but sort of a, a press release uh, w- that summarizes some of the key uh, uh, factors uh, of, of, of what's been happening in the music industry uh, on the recorded side uh, for 2014 uh, and this is called the digital music report you can find it on the IFEI website actually I would recommend going to download the whole the whole thing because it is pretty helpful and it is one of the few things that is free uh, to download and uh, um, they reported that overall the global recorded music revenues in 2014 declined by 0.4%. Uh, this represents actually an improvement over last year, uh, where over the same period, uh, sort of over 2013, they uh, declined uh, by 3.9%, so they declined more uh, in 2013 than in 2014. Uh, the physical market declined by 8.1% in 2014, and for the first time, uh, digital and physical revenues are on par. Essentially, uh, digital revenues marginally surpassed the physical ones, but they're both at a 46% market share. And a uh, big story, obviously, is subscription services continue the growth although it's slower than uh, in the previous reports uh, it's gone from 51 percent growth in 2013 to 39 growth in 2014 39 percent and uh, uh, so a, a bunch of different figures to talk about here uh, but interesting to see that uh, uh, you know uh, physical continues to decline but things are, are sort of settling down uh, uh, olivia h- what do you make of uh, some of these figures obviously uh, there's there was a lot of concern uh, over the 2014 figures from north america and europe because we'd, we'd seen a, a, a steeper decline than we thought in download sales and uh, streaming revenues were making uh, up for that so do you think that the fact that we're sort of in a flat situation is, is a good thing right now well i think you know like looking overall to the market right now like um it's funny that you're saying like uh, it's it's less declining than the year before, etc. I think like from next year we're going to see really again like the the, the industry growing, um, and of course physical is declining and downloads are declining. Um, this is all normal. Like what gets me really excited is to see that uh, we're going to see revenue and probably huge revenue coming in the future through markets that have been. Um, not important in the past. And if you look at countries like Brazil, uh, South America, overall, it's hundreds of millions of uh, possible consumers uh, that will suddenly become important to the industry. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I think it's it's the biggest, uh, it's it's what uh, 
uh, I, I try to be positive and we have been <laughs> seeing things being uh, so bad in a way for, for many years. And, and now we, we see really a new market opportunity uh, becoming ma mature uh, with services also that can scale and, and really get fast into those markets. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the report uh, highlighted the fact that uh, South America, as you said, uh, saw the biggest gains uh, uh, with a 7.3% increase uh, uh, overall, which is the biggest one uh, around the world. Uh, the biggest decline actually was in Asia, which was a 3.6% decline, which is kind of surprising for me. I didn't expect that to happen there. Uh, and Nico, for, from your side, how do you feel about these numbers? Do you think that uh, uh, sort of the second dip, uh, which is caused by the sort of transition to streaming, uh, uh, is less perhaps uh, damaging than people thought it might, might have been before? Yeah, I think that from what I've heard, um, you know, downloads have decreased a little bit faster than people were expecting. Um, but I think that the positive note here is that people have started to embrace streaming as a future and recognizing it that it's the most important thing going forward and that it's really something that we all need to get behind and focus on and help to, to continue to grow and to prosper. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I, I, in my personal opinion, I do think that we've kind of reached the bottom of the curve and that things are looking much more optimistic from here. Yeah, yeah, and, and obviously, you know, uh, streaming is a big story here, and uh, uh, you know, it's a big story for Apple as well. So there's a couple of stories to talk about there uh, from the past seven days. So first of all, Apple uh, released the, the beta version of its iOS 8.4 software, which supports a brand new music app and a brand new design for that interface. Uh, no real new functionality uh, uh, or import important new functionality, and obviously, no glimpses as to the streaming offering yet. But it's seems like this new music app really shows us the direction that Apple is taking in uh, in how th that uh, 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 subscription app is going to uh, evolve uh, uh, when it's released uh, possibly in June, July of, of this year. Uh, so the interesting thing here is that uh, uh, there, there's a lot of things around playlisting. So uh, people now can add their own artwork, uh, actually a description of playlists, which, which could actually come really handy uh, in for the, for the new service. Uh, they've introduced a new mini player, which kind of echoes what's been happening on the Mac app for iTunes, uh, uh, high-res artwork, you know, making the pages for artists more uh, uh, appetizing to a certain degree. So a lot of things that are portable to the new service. Uh, uh, and Nico, do you think that this is sort of like a, a, a way for them to evolve the, the app uh, and eventually this will merge into the service? Because one of my, my theories was like, it would make sense for them to actually integrate the service into the music app so that if you subscribed, you would have all of the music like of the world into the app essentially whilst before you only had your own music. But on the other hand, it might also make sense for them to have a separate app. W what do you think about that? Um, I think personally, it'd be great if it was all in the same app because the user experience I feel would be a bit better. Yeah. Uh, and Spotify have managed to do that relatively well with, you know, you have your own library and then you can have access to all of their catalog. Um, and, you know, from a personal note, again, I'm incredibly frustrated with the, the, the current um, uh, music app on iOS. It keeps, uh, it's very buggy for me. It keeps not syncing some of my songs. Um, it's a very, really bad experience. So I'm really looking forward to, to, the revamped version, and I'm also really excited to see um, how Zane Lowe plays a part in in, in this whole story. Uh, yeah. Obviously, he's kind of it was announced that he moved is, or is move, in the process of moving to Apple, uh, and uh, I think that's uh, you know a big um, you know uh, uptick for uh, curators and radio presenters and DJs. So I think that's that's going to be interesting to see what happens there. And it's great to hear that you're frustrated with the app because it means that you're still using it. Uh, I, I haven't used the sync in, uh, on my iPhone for uh, maybe four years and I've synced some stuff over via Spotify, but that didn't work very well. The tracks kept d disappearing and it wasn't the, the best experience really. Uh, I had some podcasts uh, for my uh, lectures that I wanted to sync up, but yeah, it didn't work very well. Uh, Olivia, on, on your front, what do you think about this, this new interface? Is there anything in particular that, that caught, your, caught your eye as far as uh, the, the evolution is concerned? Well, I think it's it's small improvements and, and some it's mainly like uh, user experience and and probably like uh, a little bit of a buzz. Yeah. You're going to hear every every week something new. Um, I, I think like that there is so much they have to, it's really like getting from like a store download system to uh, more experimenting your, your music. So we're going to see massive changes. Uh, on, on a personal level, I think I would 
love them also to consider a podcast that you mentioned uh, because the, the app is is very basic at this stage and uh, when you see how this mode of consumption is is growing again uh, I hope they can also do some some changes there yeah uh, yeah that, that would be great actually and uh, I mean in, in, to a certain extent it's a shame that I feel like it's a shame that it was separated to begin with just because it does feel like it means that podcasts will always be that sort of offshoot that will never be integrated as part of the ecosystem. But at the same time, I understand why that happened and sort of the history behind it. Uh, but, uh, you know, the other thing that uh, happened uh, this week was that uh, there were some rumors around which artists Apple might be talking to in regards to the new streaming service that's coming up. So uh, this is a very strong debate at the moment because we've seen Tidal, uh, you know, really make that the cornerstone of the strategy. We've seen, uh, you know, uh, Spotify do partnership with artists as well. We've seen all sorts of different services uh, try and get exclusives in order to promote their service or to get users uh, on, on the service and, and some are saying that this is a great strategy that's going to pull in consumers on the other hand some people say that this is going to kill uh, releases because you know if, if every single artist makes an exclusive deal with a different platform then it means that none of them have a complete catalog and then that becomes problematic in itself uh, as far as, and the debate you know it's kind of encompasses uh, the actual role of exclusives uh, are they important how do people react to them and, and uh, nico on your on your end i guess you, you guys have done some uh, not exclusive releases i guess but a lot of exclusive collaborations with artists uh, and djs so how have have your users taken to those collaborations? You know, is there a buzz that builds when there is an exclusive? What are the positive effects of, of that kind of thing? Yeah, I mean, in the past we've done a few exclusive deals with DJs and radio presenters around some of the shows and mixes that they've done. But in most of cases, you know, people are free and open to, to host their show or their mix in other places. Yeah. Um, for me, I, I'm personally a little bit worried about this. That it's going to lead to a lot of fragmentation between the different services. And as a consumer, that's going to be a bad experience. Um, I can understand why it's happening, though, because, you know, uh, uh, services like Spotify and RDO and Google Play are, at the end of the day, very similar. They have, you know, roughly the same catalog of 20 million tracks. Yeah. And so in order for them to di differentiate, they're going to want to do exclusives and the labels and artists are going to want to do that because, you know, they probably get a better deal. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I think the only sort of positive or the good the good uh, outcome on this is that a lot of people are still talking about uh, exclusive in terms of windowing. So perhaps, you know, the new album is only available for a month on, you know, Service X or whatever it may be. Yeah. Um, and it's not a sort of permanent uh, exclusivity. So I think that that could be a good sort of middle ground yeah yeah and olivia you work with artists a lot uh, in your previous career and and the, uh, also uh, at, when you were at the orchard you, you worked uh, on distribution so you're aware of the issues around this uh, uh, what do you think about exclusives do you think that prolonged exclusives may hurt the industry in the long in the long run or, or services um maybe it's it's mostly hurting fans and that's yeah. the bad side um I think it's a little bit the sad part of the business. We we are uh, it's becoming more tactics uh, uh, and like a little war in between services than really uh, driving value for for your customer and um, basically getting a, a record um, successful. Um, it's it's interesting to see that in the TV world, you know, like Netflix and stuff like that. Of course, you want to subscribe to. Netflix to get a house of cards or stuff like that, and it makes sense. Now, um, if, uh, I don't know, I'm a fan of this band and suddenly it's going to be on Tidal, but not on Spotify where I'm right now or another one, at the end of the day, you, you're only frustrating your fans. Uh, and uh, as a subscriber for uh, a service, uh, I mean, it's not that I'm going to have three services because I want to I'm so much of a music fan that they're going to subscribe to all of them. Yeah, exactly. Um, so um, I, th I think, again, like uh, windowing is, is something that is uh, acceptable. Um, now, maybe uh, really providing uh, cool experiences for every services is uh, what works best. And, and taking it back to uh, my orchard years, uh, we would do something specific for iTunes uh, but we would also do something specific for uh, a Deezer or for Amazon. Yeah. And I think it's where you can really 
um, drive value and it's doing something native to uh, their service instead of uh, playing like marketing tactics and and doing a bit of a war in between services. Yeah, and, and this is kind of brings up two problems. The first problem is, as you said, that uh, a lot of the services that are coming up right now do not have a freemium component uh, because uh, services are, are pushing to sort of uh, uh, be premium only, like Tidal, for example. Uh, uh, and that means that if there is an exclusive, only the people that are actually subscribing and pay for that service can access it. On the other hand, there is an issue that has been seen with Vessel and also with Tidal in the last few days, that if there is an exclusive, that, that exclusive can, you know, gets uploaded to YouTube uh, every five minutes, which means that even if they are uh, taking it down every five minutes, there is still one or two or three videos with that ex release that are accessible. And so, I, I don't know, is, is there anything that can be done around this? Will it put pressure on YouTube to uh, make it faster to take things down I'm, I'm not sure what the solution is here anybody want to take that the, the, the thing is um, I don't know like for me like saying no to freemium is uh, it's incredibly uh, I'm, I feel like we're losing a massive opportunity um, and maybe the problem today of freemium is not freemium it's actually more that the free offering has been lacking of focus or uh, innovation in, in uh, advertising formats. Yeah. Um, and if you think about the granularity of uh, music uh, from a band, etc., uh, the value of the audiences uh, those artists have and, and uh, um, etc., like this is huge for advertising. And saying no to this now is sounds like uh, uh, incredibly sad. And um, I understand why. Uh, if it's saying no to freemium now because we want to have more value to free and advertising, then yes, it's a good, uh, it's a good thing. Now, if it's saying like everyone gonna have to pay from tomorrow, uh, I think we're gonna see uh, uh, underground services uh, being there. It could be YouTube or it could be uh, uh, SoundCloud. It could be you know many more. Um, uh, offerings and uh, um, I, I think we're just like it's a, it's the wrong debate. Yeah. Um, for me, like we are we are already like uh, uh, fans of uh, of uh, Spotify, Deezer, and so on, and we subscribed. Now the younger generation, um, you need to come up with something and and saying like, uh, come in this beautiful world garden yeah. and pay me something. It's it's tough. So. I don't know. I feel like there is a, a big trend right now to say no to freemium, uh, but the reality is that there is a massive opportunity to to be worked there. Yeah, absolutely. Talking about ad supported services, Nico. Let, let's talk about Mixcloud a little bit. So, uh, what what's been happening with the company? You've been in the states now for a, a year ish, around. So, how's it, how's it going over there? And then, uh, sort of, what's been happening with Sonos? Obviously, a, a big announcement of the finally a, a, a beta integration into the Sonos system. Yeah, um, so you know, I moved here about 14 months ago, uh, and it's been an incredible time here in New York City. Uh, I've been working a lot on sort of general business development and sort of raising our profile in America. Um, you know, um, I was looking at the numbers just before the call, and we've doubled um, our user numbers here in America in the last 18 months. Awesome. So it's going really well. Um, I think a lot of it, you know, has to do with electronic music becoming so popular in the States and a lot of people kind of embracing it. So we're kind of benefiting a, a lot from that. Um, you know, just to touch on the point about advertising, you know, mo most of our uh, revenue comes from from brands and through advertising. Yeah. And yeah, I completely agree. We're, ver we're very much, um, you know, in favor of new formats, uh, doing more exciting things with brands, branded content, and really kind of adding value to the experience so that brands, you know, could curate DJ mixes or radio stations or whatever it may be. And that's actually much more interesting than, you know, a simple banner ad or a pre-roll video. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in terms of uh, Sonos, uh, yeah, as you mentioned, uh, we've just we've just launched the beta with them uh, last week. So if you're interested to try that out on a Sonos user, you can go to mixcloud.com forward slash Sonos. Uh, it's beta, so there may be a, one or two little bugs. Uh, but we're uh, hoping to officially launch it uh, within about a month or so. Um, and then, um, you know, in, in terms of other things that we've been working on, uh, we've been working a lot on uh, our mobile apps, especially the on-ramps 
to the mobile apps because we've realized, you know, we have over 6 million radio shows and DJ mixes on the site now, but how do you connect people with the best curator, the best DJ, the best radio presenter for them? Yeah. Uh, so we're sort of putting a lot of work and time into trying to optimize the on-ramp and make sure that people sort of come into the system and find, you know, what they like the most. Yeah, absolutely. And in terms of like a, a desktop versus mobile, how, how is that uh, going? And uh, uh, do you see a lot of people actually registering for the service? Because that's one of the big, the big issues, actually, I guess, with advertising, just to make sure you know who your, who your audience is. Absolutely. Yeah. In terms of desktop versus mobile, um, mobile is growing incredibly fast. Uh, it just passed 50% in the US wow. and some of our other uh, leading markets. And I think that, you know, if you look at our peer services, uh, I think within a year or two, it's going to be up there at 70, even 80%. Um, so yeah, that's really exciting for us. And I think ultimately, you know, with the power of smartphones becoming uh, increasingly um, you know easy to, easy to use and easy to have in your pockets and networks becoming even better and better you know that 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 trends only going to continue awesome and uh, obviously mixout also has a pro service uh, uh, so if people want to check it out uh, and uh, they, they do not want the advertising then they can go and, and subscribe as well uh, to the uh, to the monthly uh, service uh, which is great and uh, uh, so moving on I wanted to talk uh, about uh, uh, Spotify's uh, new round, I guess. Uh, that's that's one of the, the items of news that came up this week. Uh, 400 million uh, to rule them all, uh, to a certain extent. <laughs> uh, uh, it's, it's a big, big uh, round uh, uh, that would value the company at over 8 billion. Uh, definitely the, the highest you know, the valuation for a music streaming service uh, uh, that we know of uh, 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 to date. Uh, one of the highest valuations for any startup that is out there uh, at the moment uh, worldwide. So a uh, big deal. Uh, the, the question is, is this uh, the last round before the IPO, which, uh, you know, I, I was assuming it would be, but uh, you never know in this market. And, and also, you know, what do you think they can do with this money? Like, o Olivia, do, do you think that there is anything that they haven't managed to do right now that a, a fresh injection of cash would enable them to do now? Um, well, it, it's truly like a massive, uh, a massive round and... and uh to me, there is only one way for them to, to go. It's the IPO at this stage. Yeah. Um, I would be surprised to see like uh, any um, acquisition or stuff like this happening. Uh, now, why why now and uh, why how much? Um, well, it's the perfect moment with Apple coming now that's going to be truly like a massive competition uh, just with iOS and uh um, I, I think it's mainly to finance uh, growth in other territories and probably marketing also. Yeah. They're going to have to uh, to market a lot and, and uh, I think it's just the right moment to do it. Yeah, that, that's a good point, actually. They're probably earmarked a big marketing spend if Apple comes out with uh, with all, all guns blazing uh, with the new service. Uh, and, and Nico, is there anything that you see in Spotify that you think, oh, they, if they had loads of money, they could do this? Or uh, is, is it just literally like, you know, a, a growth uh, uh, injection and, and, you know, it's going to help them uh, do certain things that, uh, or carry on doing certain things that are at the moment are, are still losing the money? Yeah, no, I think Olivia is right, uh, you know, investing in marketing. Um, I also know that their um, licenses are coming up for renewal right now. Right. So um, I think they're going to probably have to invest more in that as well. Uh, and then just, you know, tech, technology is always moving forward. So they, you know, probably working on a Apple iWatch uh, version right now. And, you know, you need to invest in the development teams to kind of build those new for those new platforms. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we've seen some companies already uh, ready their apps uh, for that. Uh, uh, Pandora announced they will be available on the iWatch from day one on the 26th, I believe it's the release date. And uh, a, a few other apps have, have announced. Uh, Shazam obviously was demoed on the on the unveiling a few weeks ago. Uh, and we also have uh, Apple uh, apps like a Pacemaker DJ uh, amplifier remote uh, and uh, uh, that that is is that it I think that's it uh, uh, but presumably I would imagine that Spotify audio deezer and the likes won't be too far behind because uh, it's not actually an entire new app that you have to develop it's, it's, it's sort of an add-on to the iOS version so it's kind of an, up, an update to a certain extent uh, uh, either of you guys getting the Apple watch uh, any of your friends getting the Apple watch I don't know anybody who's ordered one yet so um so I never got a watch. Uh, maybe Swiss, but uh, I have no watch. Uh, <laughs> and at this stage, uh, um, I, it's funny. Like I, I was reading something about um, Runkeeper uh, the, the other day, and 
Um, one of the things I was excited for the watch was like, oh, maybe when you go for a run, you only have to watch, etc. Uh, apparently, you still need to get the phone with you. Um, so, <laughs> because there's just no GPS on the, on the watch, etc. So, oh, yeah. uh, my question, my question will be like, okay, it's cool, but at the end, it's just a remote. Um, yeah. That is, uh, uh, but I still need my mobile, etc. So, um, obviously, it's going to be a beautiful piece. Uh, obviously, I'm going to be tempted, <laughs> but uh, uh, do you, I really need it? Um, that's another question. Um, <laughs> yeah. But like for for music, I think it's going to be just like you know, it's mainly a remote, which is cool. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, I'm happy with my Pebble. I mean, it's it's been fine for the last uh, uh, two years. The only problem is the screen because the screen has had issues. I've had to replace like uh, one replaced, and and this one has started to act up as well. Uh, so the screen is a little bit dodgy sometimes. Uh, uh, but you know, the seven day battery life can't be beaten really. Like if you have to put the watch on charge every night, I just I just couldn't yeah. deal with it. I already forgot to do it with this one, and that's a seven day battery, and that sometimes just dies on me. And I'm like, oh no. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, and, and it's also it's also weird the idea of having a watch that doesn't display the time at all times, because <laughs> this one has got an, this one has got an e-ink display, so it just it's always there. But with the Apple Watch, unless you're actually turning your wrist, it won't show the time. It'll just be a dark the screen. Special app that you need to download. So that, that's weird, isn't it? Does it just have a dark screen on your wrist? Uh, but yeah, Nico, oh. <laughs> does it still exist? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, and Nico, what do you think about uh, the watch? You know, do you think that uh, there may be enough adoption to warrant uh, even smaller companies like 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 yourselves, like looking at uh, the interface and seeing if there's not something that can be done? Yeah, I mean, we'll we'll definitely be looking at the interface. Um, but as Olivia said, you know, it, for us at the moment, it would be kind of a glorified remote. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, I, 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 I would like to see how it, how it actually feels on your hand. For me, there's very much a physicality element of, you know, what does it actually feel like? Is it clunky? Is it big? Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, historically, you know, if you look at the iPhone version one, that was quite big and clunky, but, you know, it got better quite quite quickly so uh yeah i'm gonna be probably waiting for version two or three yeah i've always waited for version two i got the iphone 3g i got the ipad 2 uh so yeah i think the wise choice is to wait if you can and yeah. if anything get a pebble the pebble is like the, the old ones are like 70 bucks or something so if you want uh, to tie if you want to like tie uh, yourself over for for a year until the, the new one comes out you can get one of these uh, and they're really nice uh, I, I was very good at resisting uh, uh, the uh, the new pebble kickstarter but i was kind of uh, again because i had a dodgy screen on my first one i was kind of thinking maybe i shouldn't get the first ones that have been released and wait a little bit in the cycle before that happens and and uh, uh, another streaming, streaming service story actually coming internationally from India. And uh, Savna had caught my eye just because they released a major update to their app. And one of the features that they introduced was something that I haven't seen in other apps before uh, on, on the music front, which is tagging. So it's such a simple thing that happens in photos all the time, but just the simple idea of like tagging people to the music that you're listening to and to start a conversation through that. It's sort of like a, a, a mixture of Facebook with a messaging app, but it's more... It's, it's a quicker way, essentially, to saying, oh, I think this person would like this. I'll just tag them to the song and then they can comment on it if they like it. Uh, but what do you reckon? You know, an interesting new feature. Is there more space for services to experiment with some stuff that hasn't been seen on apps before? Uh, uh, Olivia? Um, so, obviously, I didn't, didn't get the chance oh, to, sure, to yeah, try yeah. it. Yeah. Um, no, but, of course. Yeah, but, me, uh, neither, me neither. <laughs> but but the, uh, it's truly... The, the social aspect of music and the emotional layer you can have uh, on the track is, is super important. And it's true that although we have seen through, uh, in the past through Facebook, the Facebook uh, integrations of Spotify, what I'm listening right now, etc., it's been, it's been mainly, um, as an experience, it was maybe too much. Uh, and it wasn't getting to the this little thing that is like, hey, I'm listening to this song and I'm thinking about you and stuff like that. Um, and I think there is a value there. Now, do you want to get this integrated into an app like Spotify? Or do you want to use, uh, as you mentioned, the, the, the new messenger um, options of Facebook? Um, I see maybe more va like opportunities on, on that level. Um, yeah. And it could be really interesting. And I, I have to say, like, uh, uh, 
have been working a lot about uh, expressing in a richer way. Um, and I think that messaging gaps and music, there is really a lot to do there. Yeah, yeah. And actually, I thought of you because uh, the uh, uh, Facebook uh, prompted me to the fact that now you can add stickers to photos when you post a photo. So that was kind of, OK, mm -hmm. right. Interesting. Uh, the bell. <laughs> yes, exactly. And uh, 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 yeah, it's kind of a weird one. I I'm not sure um, how we're going to solve it. But uh, Nico, the other thing that I noticed is that uh, whilst a year ago, a year and a half ago, we talked a lot, a lot on the show about the idea of sort of APIs that could bridge different services it seems like it's something that has really died down as far as uh, you know the services that i can see uh, at least around me are concerned uh, you know the tomahawk is still around obviously they do great stuff but i haven't seen anybody else come up and do similar things that can sort of integrate different services into one so do you think that this is due to competition is it just because people don't care or are we going to see this come up again i think it just mostly has to do with the fact that the services are sort of walled gardens and it's very difficult for them to give out, you know, access through their APIs to the actual MP3s. And so, you know, the best you can do is kind of point towards those services. Yeah. Um, you know, we're constrained by the licenses that we have that we can't give out access to the MP3s. And so, sure. you know, it, it, it is, it is definitely an issue. Uh, and I think the, the, the potential fragmentation that we talked about earlier uh, might make it even a bigger issue. Um, but I don't know if there's a, a very easy way to solve it. Yeah, yeah. It's it's, 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 a, it's a weird one, I think, just because, uh, you know, there was a lot of optimism a couple of years ago that this would all sort of be resolved somehow, that the idea of the walled garden. But I think it's perhaps been uh, exacerbated by some of the the new product releases and so uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens over the next few months uh, next they've now finally announced uh, the guitar hero live game that is gonna be released uh, in uh, uh, september i believe uh, sometime in september and uh, it's gonna essentially feature a recreate a live concert experience from the preparation and the warm-up to the actual performance in front of a, of a real crowd so it's, it seems very exciting and uh, uh, it's interesting to see these games come back now uh, God knows why, and God knows why they went back, they went away, and, and why they're being brought back now. It just seems like a weird sort of a, a congregation of all of them. And I was talking actually to Smule last week on the show and, and sort of uh, commenting on the fact that uh, uh, it, it is interesting that uh, there is this, this new revived interest in, in music gaming and, and sort of sync uh, games. Uh, uh, do you think that people are still interested in this kind of offering? And uh, uh, what can they offer more that they haven't offered before. So I, I don't know, it's kind of like, I, I've never really been a keen uh, gamer or player of these games, but I was just wondering if you, if you have any thoughts on whether there is still a market out there for, for them. Anybody? I mean, I, I imagine it's kind of a little bit like movie films, right? If you know you've had a good success in the past, and yeah. you can kind of franchise it and release, you know, Jaws 2, Jaws 3, Jaws 14, Jaws 15, then <laughs> kind of why wouldn't you? Um, Jurassic I, I, Park I guess that there's probably maybe a new generation of, of, of kids who haven't tried the original Guitar Hero, yeah. maybe. Um, but I'm not a, 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 a huge gamer, so I'm probably not yeah, the best either. person to answer that. No, I mean, either. it's kind of like, a, it's probably like a, as you said, there's probably a new generation that hasn't used them yet. And there's probably an older generation-ish, you know, five, six years uh, uh, behind that might think these are now almost retro and will want to try them again <laughs> so <laughs> it'll be interesting to see uh, what comes of it and uh, again uh, they are also launching um, a mobile uh, portion of the game so you won't be tied down to the console which is interesting uh, uh, and it could be more you know could mean more money uh, on, on the sync front which is great because there was a huge drop off in, in sync uh, revenues after a sort of rock band and, and guitar hero stopped uh, buying tracks and syncing tracks uh, so it's going to be interesting to see what happens there the other thing that they're doing is they're launching a ghtv guitar hero tv to accompany the new game so this is going to be a 24 hour day tv that is going to be essentially like mtv used to be just with music videos and uh users are going to be able to log in, uh, play a, a game alongside the TV, as far as I understand, but they're also going to be able to challenge other people and join other people's games whilst this is going on. So it's sort of like a like a, a, a lean back slash lean forward slash can't really change it, but you can join it uh, experience. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of a weird description of it. Uh, Olivia, do you think that this could work? It's, it, it's kind of cool to see this model of like a music television come back, but in an interactive way, right? Um, I've 
I've not been like following this story really, um, uh, so it's hard for me to to talk about it now. Truly, the, the the there is in one side you have the mobile opportunity, and then obviously there is like gaming is still a lot through your TV. So yeah, I imagine like this ecosystem into gaming um, has some some potential. Uh, I truly need to try it <laughs> yeah. to to uh, to give like. Uh, uh, interesting feedback for that. Absolutely, I, I have no idea how it's going to work. It just it, it, it seems it seems cool. Uh, I, I just can't really picture how it's going to work in real life. If you if it is like a live stream channel, and, but but you can join it and, and leave it at any point and, and play with it. Uh, I it kind of like the idea of like having a virtual band where you know yeah. the drummer's in Iceland, the uh, the guitarist is in Thailand, and you know you may be playing from Italy or something like that. Yeah, I think that's cool. I think the challenge will be latency because you know. Even now, just on a Skype call, it's it, you just there's half a second of latency is enough to throw everything. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. and that's why I have this really complicated setup here with a, uh, a huge mixing desk, and everybody gets their own headphone mix, so you don't hear yourself and all that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's it is it's not easy to solve that problem. There's a lot of companies that are trying. Uh, I keep he talking to companies that are doing sort of music collaboration apps that are trying to solve that uh, latency issue uh, with video conferencing uh, but it's very very tricky uh, because essentially they have to compensate for you can't eliminate the latency entirely so you have to create ways by which the apps can perceive the latency and compensate for it automatically which is not easy uh, and, and you can see with skype sometimes skype you, you're on a call and if something will happen to to the to the connection and then you will hear the fast forwarded version of what a person said and then it will start again in the normal pace and so that's kind of like how skype tries to catch up to what's been going on and what what all the packets that it lost in the meantime but uh, yeah it's it's a, it's an interesting one and uh finally uh oh there's a couple more things so one thing is the vinyl chart so very exciting uh the fact that uh whilst you know a few years ago uh if you'd have asked me uh, i would have said you know all oh, vinyl is, is you know it's a hipster fad it's it's you know it's going to work for for a little while but it's going to go away well vinyl is in its uh, sort of seventh uh, uh, straight year of of massive growth uh, it grew another 69 percent in the first quarter of 2015 over 2014 uh, uh first quarter again same period uh, so massive increase in sales uh, it's not huge you know we're talking about one one point two uh, nine millions of units shifted uh in the UK is substantial though it's it's, uh, it's it's a big economy for some of the independent labels especially that rely on on vinyl uh, um, primarily and uh, uh, so the uh, the UK official charts company has announced a new vinyl chart uh, which will cover uh, both singles and albums it'll be a top 40 and uh, it will essentially allow uh, uh, some of the bands that might do well on vinyl but may not uh, sell enough to actually get in the normal chart to uh, gain some visibility so this is exciting because it feels like I, I was looking at the top 40 chart uh, both in the singles and albums side and it feels like almost none of the people that are in it are actually in the mainstream top 40 uh, uh, which is uh, a new thing like you know you don't often see a brand new chart that really highlights the independent sector so much uh, Olivia as somebody that worked for an independent distributor do you think that's a good thing and and how will uh, will this change also band strategies you know if, if they know they can get to a number one spot on a vinyl chart Will they aim to, to sell more vinyl in order to place higher on a chart if they know that they can't chart on, on the normal one? Yeah, it's, it's a good point. And, and uh, obviously being first in the charts is always a kind of a, a dream. Yeah. And it has a real impact in, in, in perception. So definitely I think we're going to see this. And, and looking at the, the charts right now, like it's, it's interesting to see that it's completely different uh, bands and albums being... Uh, in in the charts um, now, in terms of the market opportunity, it it remains like I, I'll call this like a beautiful niche, uh, and I don't think we're going to see like this growing for, you know, it, it's going to grow no doubt, but like this becoming like the main revenue in the future. <laughs> it's not uh, I don't think so. <laughs> right. But but it's it's uh it it makes so much sense to. If you like, kind of a, a band like buying this uh, great product that is super nice and it's really a premium experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, Nico, do you collect vinyl? I guess you probably, if you do, you probably weren't weren't able to take them to New York. But uh, well, how do you feel about this phenomenon? And do you think it, it, uh, is there a chart of, for vinyl in the US? Actually, I don't know. Um, you know, I'm I'm a 
big vinyl fan. I kind of grew up with vinyl. I'm a DJ, so vinyl very has a special place in my heart. Yeah. Um, what I thought was interesting about this chart is that uh, you know it, if you look at the the, the bands and the, and the acts that are in it, it's mostly rock, indie rock. Yeah. Actually, some old artists like Bob Dylan are in there as well. Um, so th- th- I think that there's maybe kind of a resurgence in that in that scene of, of vinyl, uh, and I think it's kind of testament to the fact that. Um, you know, sometimes people like the physicality of things. Yeah. For example, I actually prefer to read a book <clears throat> in its physical paper format than, than on a Kindle or a digital version. So I think it's, it, yeah, like Olivier said, it's not going to be a huge market driver. Yeah. Um, but it, I, I, I think that, you know, it's it's there to stay and that people still do appreciate being able to hold something in your hands. And it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a different experience at yeah. the end of the day. Yeah, and uh, there is a U.S. chart on Billboard for vinyl, but it, it is a premium chart, so you have to pay for it, you know, uh, for Billboard in order to access it. Uh, it's not part of the free offering, obviously. It's it's more specialized. And yeah, I mean, it, it, again, like uh, you uh, picked a picked a good point uh, talking about genres, because obviously I, I would imagine the albums chart is going to be much more indie and rock skewed, and the singles chart is going to be more dance music skewed, and so uh, that's also going to be interesting to see how it exposes to independent parts portion of the industry but in, in two different genres depending on, on the format that is that has been chosen as well uh, so yeah no, we'll, we'll keep an eye on it and see how how it, it affects uh, uh, perhaps uh, marketing uh, campaigns and, and all that kind of thing uh, in the next uh, few months uh, I'm sure people are already working on it right now and finally uh, Universal Music Group has agreed to settle a, a lawsuit that had been going on uh, with a bunch of artists it was kind of like a class action uh, type thing uh, although I'm not sure if it had a classification of a class action but it was definitely a, a sort of a, a lawsuit from a bunch of artists including Rick James, Chuck D and Public Enemy and they managed to uh, get $11.5 million out of UMG uh, for the issue of classification of digital downloads we talked about this on the show uh, before I'm sure uh, but from, although a while ago uh, and you know digital downloads uh, in the contracts that were signed uh, uh, sort of between the 90s and the early 2000s uh, were a bit of a murky uh, domain in that uh, artists hold that uh, they uh, should have been classed as sinks essentially as licenses uh, in which case they would have gotten 50% of the of the income that the label made on, on those uh, whilst the labels uh, uh, held that they are normal sales uh, as if they were selling a CD in which case they would only owe the artist 10 to 15% of royalties uh, so the the, set, the the plaintiffs looked happy with the set- settlement as, as far as uh, at least the articles that I read uh, said uh, interesting though because you know three million will go towards legal costs and any artist that had a deal with universal including capital records artists uh, uh, between january 1965 and april 30th 30th 2004 will be able to uh, apply for a share of that money so it just doesn't feel like it's going to be that much money in the end considering uh, how much more uh, potentially uh, would have been uh, uh, awarded if all those artists had bundled together but there, there were probably very good reasons for this settlement to to happen and it's uh, at least good news that these are artists are going to get a little bit more money uh, and also they get a 10% bump on uh, the royalties of uh, uh, download and, and, and ringtones uh, obviously this is appears it appears like this is the last big lawsuit on uh, when it comes to the uh, download space uh, I doubt we're going to see that much more happen because obviously uh, we're talking about <coughs> stuff that happened years ago uh, Olivia do you think that we're going to start seeing more uh, when it comes to streaming uh, in terms of like artists questioning how the royalties are distributed especially as we see companies like Spotify, for example, start uh, eyeing an IPO and, and delivering potentially uh, upwards of a billion dollars uh, or, or to uh, the, the majors uh, that uh, is not presumably, go- presumably going to go back to artists. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's two uh, layers. One, one is the past, and obviously uh, I'd say like some lawyers did a, a great job to, to monetize this and, and to fight it. Uh, and then there is like um, the, the new uh, market and how you're going to sign to a major or to a label uh, and how you're going to be uh, compensated for, for, for your music. And um, um, I think, you know, like the, the, the deals needs to be to change. Uh, and we are like everything has been uh, proposed as a, as copyright and the notion of selling copies uh, while we are now in the access rights uh, uh, business. So 
there's a lot of innovation to to come here. It's not just like 360 deals, etc. It's like more what is the right uh, um, approach to uh, to to share revenues because for sure the label is driving value, and for sure artists and producers are are. Uh, driving revenue so i hope that we're going to see some innovation there yeah yeah and, and uh, nico obviously uh, in the u.s there's been a we talked on the show a lot about the evolution of copyright law and what's going to happen there a lot of proposals flying around a lot of confusion as well because it seems like there's a different a bunch of different bills that are coming in that are sort of uh, trying to implement portions of these new recommendations uh, 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 whilst the recommendation was to try and create like an overarching bill that could change things. Uh, does that create any uncertainty from a digital services point of view uh, as to what you're going to have to pay in two or three years time and and how the system is going to work? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's, it's, it's difficult for us to be able to forecast when there's all these uncertainties uh, around the licensing side of things. And, you know, the big one coming up is the Webcaster 4 agreement that should be out sort of later this year in December. Um, but I think, you know, what to, to again sort of strike on a positive note, I think what's great about the, the sort of digital future of streaming is that there is this opportunity to be incredibly transparent, yeah. to track everything and to pay out uh, in a very transparent manner. And so, you know, I think that, that that's the direction that things need to go in. And I, I'm kind of, uh, I encourage the conversations around, you know, what are the revenue shares you know, how much are the labels keeping? How much are the artists getting? How much are the service providers keeping? You know, th those sort of conversations need to happen. I think they will happen more and more. Uh, and I think that's only a good thing, personally. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, and that's about all we have time for this week. Uh, but there was a lot of stories to talk about. Uh, just nothing huge this week. Uh, uh, we are all awaiting, obviously, uh, some of the biggest stories of, of this summer, uh, like the launch of the Apple service. Uh, w the WWDC dates actually were uh, just announced. Uh, I have totally missed them. Uh, but yeah, WWDC 2015 is the, the um, uh, time where people are speculating that the new uh, streaming service is going to be announced although there is also the potential that uh, apple will only showcase ios uh, 9 and then uh, release the streaming service in the fall when ios 9 is released so there's really uh, no way of knowing this uh, at this stage and uh, uh, once again if you are in london on the 6th of may do sign up for uh, dmt's uh, sort of drinks uh, thing uh, meetup uh, you can find it on uh, digitalmusictrends.eventbrite.com and guys uh, uh, once again thank you so much uh, for nico it is uh, a mixcloud.com uh, uh, and you can find everything on the site uh, and follow what they're doing and uh, for olivia uh, you can follow him on uh, twitter on at uh, uh, olides uh, and uh, i'm sure if you do come down on uh, the 6th uh, you might meet him there as well uh, and thank you so much both for your time today Thanks a lot. Cheers, uh, and thank thanks you. for listening to DMT. Uh, it comes out every week. You can find it on digitalmusictrends.com. And uh, uh, thanks so much for listening. Have a fantastic week. And until next time. <laughs>